Welcome everyone to episode 5 of The Weekly Show, and tonight we go over some of our rave reviews from last week. Turns out people like the new format. In fact, Stevie Wonder wrote in and said, It's the best show I've ever seen. Michael J. Fox writes, This show left me shaking with excitement. And Walter Cronkite wrote in and said, If this is the future of news, I'm glad I'm dead. So, we've got a jam-packed show, 10 minutes of pure comic gold and news, so we got to get right to it. So let's go to me outside on the street talking to real everyday people under the umbrella of truth. Take it away. Anything no. on your mind, hot topic? Um, no, not really. No? The recession. Well, so do you have any advice for those who are unemployed? I did go live on a kibbutz, though. Many you lived years on a ago. kibbutz? Yeah, I did. I lived in this town oh. in kibbutz. Wow, the plot thickens. So, you know, go live on a kibbutz in Israel. You heard it here till, first, folks. Till the recession gets better. <laughs> if you're unemployed, <laughs> go live on a kibbutz in Israel. That's the best strategy we got here. She'll be right. Uh, Who will be right? Wait, what are you well, talking it's about? It's just a saying. In oh, Australia, it's a saying. In Australia <laughs> everything, just... everything will be right, so it's, all, it's always been said, she'll be right. Oh, she'll be right. She'll be right. That's a, that's a, that's oh, a so saying. Oh, so this is a saying? That's a saying, she'll be right. She'll be right. Yeah. So, uh, she won't be left. That's right. She'll be right. <laughs> As in, okay. She'll be all right. She'll be all right. Yeah. So the Got recession, it. you'll be like, you'll, you'll, you'll be right. No oh, look at that. So that's, uh, we're, that's how we're going to end this. She'll so, be all right. so your your advice to all those unemployed is, she'll be all right. She'll be all right. She'll be all right. Keep faith, you know. Keep the faith. That's right. Well, after every ro after every rough road, there's a rainbow. So. Brings a tear to my eye. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's the sign the interview's over, when the umbrella of truth says there is no more truth to be had. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, truly riveting. That was exciting. Uh, so, the past few weeks we had breaking news that took the place of weather, but this week we're making some special time for our meteorologist, so let's go out to Mark and his sizzling forecast. More important than the weather? Oh, yeah, I see. Let's have a medical correspondent on that says, Hey, Michael Jackson died. I confirmed it. Or, oh, look, Brazilian correspondent. It's hot in Brazil. More important than the weather. Anyway, now time for some fluff. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the viewer that uh, knit this shirt, actually, for me. So I'd like to thank her. Her name is Doris Phillips. She's turning 102 tomorrow. I know she said, please don't mention me on TV, but Doris, tomorrow, I want you to have a really happy birthday. What? Oh, oh, all right. Um, apparently, Doris Phillips just passed away. Uh, I guess I wasn't supposed to mention her. Uh, well, Doris Phillips. 101 years and 364 days. I guess back to the studio. Mark, are you going to tell us the weather? Uh, it looks cloudy, I guess. Thank you for that expert analysis. Uh, now it's time for us to go get the skinny on Hollywood. And therefore that means we will not be turning to Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> it's time for some exciting movie news. So, the movies this summer have sucked. So, let's give you a preview of the biggest blockbusters expected to be coming out next summer. I'm going to quickly run down the list. You can look out for them on your own. It's Iron Man 2, Alice in Wonderland, Date Night, Robin Hood, Shrek Forever After, Sex in the City 2, Toy Story 3, The A-Team, and The Green Hornet. Look at that. That's what you have to look forward to next year. See? Don't kill yourself yet. Wait until next year. Uh, also, uh, a quick Oscar prediction here, the movie Nine, it's called Nine, spelled out the word Nine. There's also a movie called Nine with the number, which is a weird cartoon, don't confuse it, but the movie Nine that's spelled out will win the Oscar for Best Picture. It's star starring Daniel Day-Lewis and Nicole Kidman. It's a musical. You heard it here first. That's the prediction. Back to you. That was weird. Uh, okay, let's move on. It is now time for us to go to our Asia correspondent, who is literally live in South Korea, uh, and apparently he's barfing up, I mean, barking up a hot new meal. Mmm, sounds delicious. Hey, what's up? This is David, your Asia live reporter here. Um, so in front of me is a uh, the dog soup. Um, this is the sauce that you dip the dog meat in, and uh, I will show you how this uh, how this works. So you dip this in here. This is dog meat, like Lady and the Tramp dog meat. 
It's very soft, um, very tender, not so gamey. What do you think, Glenn? <laughs> It's a little more fatty than beef, but it tastes tastes similar. Okay. And then Brian? It tastes kind of like chicken. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes beef, sometimes chicken. It tastes like chicken Maybe and you beef. Ate, like beef and chicken. All those. I kind of feel up. like it's like a mix. Uh. Of so you guys remember? Uh, Attorney Lena Chan. Um, here she is. This is uh, this is called chicken stew samgyetang. It has uh, these vegetables and, and uh, other items in there and ginseng. It's time to go long for a pass out to our sports correspondent uh, reporting on some late breaking sports news. So uh, catch this. Thanks, Matt. God, we're so cool. Anyway, my name is Brooke Schneider, and I'm going to be reporting this week on the MLB trading deadline. If you may or may not know, it's July 31st. It is coming up, and the big player that everyone's looking at, Roy Halladay of the Toronto Blue Jays, one of the best pitchers in the game. A lot of teams are interested in him. Philadelphia Phillies, Angels, Van Heim, both two are considered the front runners. But the local teams, New York, the Yankees, and Mets, what are they going to be doing at the deadline? Well, the Mets, we thought they might be buyers. They might actually turn into sellers. They've lost. 17 of their last 25 games within the past month. Looks like the team is reeling. They could use some offense, but maybe they'll just wind up waiting for Delgado and Reyes and Beltran to come back. Who knows? Might be too late with 10 games out. The Yankees, on the other hand, just won eight straight after the All-Star break. Do they need anything? Well, Wong is out of the rotation. Maybe they'll get another starter. We'll find out July 31st. Stay tuned. Back to you in the studio, Matt. It's time for rapid fire, and the debate is fierce and ferocious this week, so get ready. everyone and you're watching the weekly show with James. Uh, all right. This is I agree people wanted Obama. I don't agree though that people wanted Obama's policies. I think in Americans voted in that's, Obama that's as, a, ridiculous. as an individual. They you. still like him as a person but they don't like I, anything he proposes. I have proposes. to stop you because we had eight years of failed policy so when people chose Obama at the polls they were definitely voting for new policies. Okay but wait I'm not disputing that like and this is actually a, a, a real point I'm about to make is that oh, I... for once. Uh, well carry whatever. on. Um, I, just because, it, this, this might be a, a difficult thought for you to comprehend, but just because people were upset with Bush and his policies doesn't mean they run screaming and crying in favor of Obama's policies. There, has, there is a happy medium between two extremes, and I think that's what people were in favor of. People actually voted in Obama because they thought they were, it was changed from past partisanship. They weren't, wasn't changed to running to the extreme socialism that some of his policies uh, suggest. No, 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 no. no. This, the, we're not talking about extreme. Socialism. What we're talking about, about are policies that do work, and uh, in due time, we'll see. We'll see more of that. But the time, truth, time is ticking. Well, the truth of the matter is that Obama needs to stop worrying about reaching his hand across the aisle and appeasing the Republicans because they failed this country miserably for eight years, and the Democrats just need to push forth. But I, all right, I, agree, I I hear your point. I'm wondering though. I thought Obama was not just change from the past of of Bush. But I thought it was a change from Washington, how Washington well, was run. Well, the truth is, well, Matt, Matt, no, the, truth, the, truth is, the truth is, the Republicans won't allow that to happen. You what do oh, yeah. what, what you mean allowing it to happen? You're you know, rolling over I mean, just, and saying, yes, Obama, just, you, whatever you say. All right, ten seconds, Obama. ten seconds, last word. Clever, clever. Okay. The fact is, President Obama, uh, he should, he was motivated. He was voted in on a platform of reaching across the aisle and compromising to reach solutions that appease all Americans. He is the president of all Americans, not just Democrats. I will just say this, and he should act that way. Because the time is taken, I would just say this: the Obama administration has tried that for the first few months, and it hasn't worked because the Republicans, the minority, will not let them. So, when now that that's failed, the majority party has to take charge and implement the policies well, and go forward from there. That's the change we're going to see. Well, and let it happen because the fact is, in a few years from now, uh, once all those policies fail, there'll be a new guard once again. Sure. See you next week, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, can you believe it? Ten minutes are up. You made it. Congrats. So, and as I end the show here tonight, I want to thank each and every one of you sincerely for watching this show every week and giving feedback. Uh, we've been taking a lot of it to heart and really trying to make the show better each and every week, but don't kill me, come on the show. 
which is still open. Open invites. If you got something to say, if you want to share it with the world, come on the show. Come on.